Hi everyone, I'm Clean and Talarikaya, and welcome to Clean's Show. Let's have a glimpse from the past. After 300 years of passivity under Spanish rule, the Filipino spirit reawakened when the three priests, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora, were guillotined without sufficient evidence of guilt. This occurred on the 17th of February. This was but rest with the spirit of liberalism when the Philippines opened its doors to the world trade and with the coming of the liberal leader in the person of Governor Carlos Maria de la Torre. The Spaniards were unable to suppress the tide of rebellion among the Filipinos. The once religious spirit transformed itself into one of the nationalism and the Filipinos demanded changes in the government and in the church. Because of today's situation, due to COVID-19 health protocol, we won't be able to invite our guests here in studio. Our guest for today is a Philippine national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal's huge fan, and an advocate of Philippine literature. Let's all welcome Dr. Rizal version 2. My question for you, sir, is why 1872 to 1898 became the period of enlightenment to the Philippine literature? Hello, everyone. So your question is about why year 1872 to 1896 became the period of enlightenment to the Philippine literature. It is simply because between those years, different propaganda movement was installed. And this propaganda movement, superheaded mostly by intellectual middle class like Jose Rizal, Marcelo del Pilar, Graciano Lopez Jaina, Antonio Luna, Mariano Ponce, Jose Maria Pangilinan, and Pedro Paterno. The five objectives of this movement were to seek reforms and changes. First, to get equal treatment for the Filipinos and the Spaniards under the law. Second, to make the Philippines a colony of Spain. Third, to restore Philippine representation in the Spanish Cortes or the Spanish Courts. And fourth, to Filipinize the parishes. And fifth and last, to give the Filipinos freedom of speech of the press, assembly, and to redress of grievances. I mentioned earlier the seven propagandists, but there are only three principal leaders of the propaganda movement. First, Jose P. Rizal. Third, Marcelo H. Del Pilar. And third, Graciano Jaina. So, here are the some highlights about them and what they have done for our country. So, let's talk about first about Dr. P. Rizal. Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado Alonso I. Riolanda was born on June 19, 1861 at Calamba, Laguna. His first teacher was his mother, Doña Teodora Alonso. He studied at the Ateneo de Manila, started medicine at the University of Santo Tomas, and finished at the Universidad Central of Madrid. He also studied at the University of Berlin, Leipzig, and Heidelberg. He died by Mastroy in the hands of Spaniards on December 30, 1896, on charges of sedition and rebellion against the Spaniards. His pen name was Laong Laan and Dimasala. Speaking of pen, let's talk about 
his works and books. Dr. Jose Pirizal, Books and Writings Number 1, Noli, Itanghere This was the novel that gave spirit to the propaganda movement and paved the way to the revolution against Spain. In this book, he encouragedly exposed the evils in the Spanish-run government in the Philippines. The Spaniards prohibited the reading of this novel, but a lot of translation were able to enter in the country, even if it meant death to those caught in possession of them. The Noli gave Philippine literature the immortal characters of Maria Clara, Juan Crisostomo Ibarra, Helias, Philosophong Tasho, Doña Victorina, Capitana Maria, Basilio and Crispin, and those characters was Rizal had a power pen in the delineation of these characters. Number 2, El Pelobusterismo. This is the sequel to Noli. Where the Noli exposed the evils in society, the Philly exposed those in the government and in the church. However, the Noli has been dubbed the noble of society while that of Philly is that of politics. 3. Mi Ultimo Adios, My Last Farewell This was a poem by Rizal when he was incarcerated at Fort Santiago is one that can compare favorably with the best in the world. It was only after his death when his name was affixed to the poem. Here are some lines of Rizal's poem my last farewell my father adored that sadness to my sorrow lands beloved filipinas hear now my last goodbye i give to you all parents and kind red and friends for i go where no slave before the oppressor bends where fate can never kill and god's reigns or in high farewell to you all from my soul torn away, friends of my childhood, and the home disposest. Give thanks that I rest from the wearisome day. Farewell to thee, to sweet friend that highlights in my way. Beloved creatures all, farewell, in death there is rest. Number 4. Sobre la Indolencia de los Filipinos On the Indolence of the Filipinos An essay on the so-called Filipino indolence and an evaluation of the reasons for such allegations. Number 5. Filipinas dentro de cien años The Philippines within a century An essay predicting the increasing influence of the U.S. in the Philippines and the decreasing interest of Europe here. Rizal predicted that if there is any other colonizer of the Philippines in the future, it would be the U.S. Number 6. A la Juventud Filipina to the Filipino Youth A poem Rizal dedicated to the Filipino youth studying at USD. Number 7. El Consejo de los Dioses The Council of the Gods An allurological play manifesting admiration for Cervantes Number 8, Junto al Pasig, Beside the Pasig River, written by Rizal when he was 14 years of age. Number 9, Mi Piden Versus, You Ask Me for Verses, Year 1882 and Alas Flores de Heidelberg, To the Flowers of Heidelberg. Two poems manifesting Rizal's unusual death of motion. Number 10, Notas a la Obra Sucesos de las Filipinas for El Dr. Antonio de Morga Notes for Philippine Events by Dr. Antonio de Morga, Year 1889 Number 11, P. Jacinto Memorias de un Estudiante de Manila P. Jacinto Memories of a Student of Manila, Year 1882 Number 12 and last, Diario de Viaje de Norte America, Diary of a Voyage to North America. Thank you very much, Dr. Rizal version 2. At this juncture, we were going to discuss about Marcelo H. Del Pilar. 
Marcelo H. Del Pilar is popularly known for his pen name of Paridel Fuldon, Piping Dilat, and Dolores Manapat. He was born at Tupang, San Nicolas, Bulacan on August 30, 1850. His parents were Julian H. Del Pilar, noted Filipino writer, and Visiasa Gatmiata. His brother was the priest Father Trivilio Del Pilar, who was banished to Marianas in 1872. Because there were many children in the family, Marcelo gave up his share for his inheritance for his older brothers and sisters. Marcelo started schooling at the school of Mr. Flores and then transferred to the San Jose before USD. His last year in the law school was interrupted for eight years after he had a quarrel with the parish priest during a baptism at San Miguel, Manila in 1880. He established the Chariong Tagalog in 1882 where he exposed the evils of the Spanish government in the Philippines and in, or in order to avoid false accusation hurled at him by the priest. To avoid banishment, he was forced to travel to Spain in 1888. He was assisted by Father Serrano Lactao in publishing a different Catholicism and Passion book wherein they made fun of the priest. They also made a Pada Pasalan or Toksuhan and Kaingatan Kayo taken from a word ingat kind of shake fish cough in politics. Upon his arrival in Spain, he replaced Cristiano Lopez Heiner as editor of La Solidaridad, a paper which became a vehicle through which reforms in the government could be worked out. This did not last long for he got sick and even when he was gravely ill and could hardly walk, he attempted to reach Hong Kong from where he he could arouse his countrymen. He died of tuberculosis in Spain, but before he died, he asked his companion to tell his wife and children that he was sorry he wasn't able to bid them goodbye, to tell, tell others about the fate of our countrymen and to continue helping the country. Pladridel was truly earned in Nike in the history of nation. Even today, countless streets have been named after him. The former King Wa has been named Pladire. The Malolos High School is now Marcelo H. Del Pilar High School, and above all, his patriotism and bravery will remain alive in our memories. The contribution and writings of Marcelo H. Del Pilar in Philippine literature during the period of enlightenment. Number one, Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Lupa, Love of Country. Translated from the Spanish Amor Patria of Rizal, published on August 20, 1882 in Jaryong, Tagalog. Number two, Taingat Kayo, Be Careful, a humorous and sarcastic dig and answer to Father Jose Rodriguez in the novel Noli of Rizal. Published in Barcelona in 1888, he used Dolores Manapat as pen name here. Dasalan and Tuxuan, Prayers and Jokes, similar to Catechism but sarcastically done against the parish priest. Published in Barcelona in 1888, because of this Del Pilar was called a filibuster done in the admirable tone of supplication and excellent use of Tagalog. Number 4, Ang Kadakilaan ng Diyos, The God's Goodness. Published in Barcelona, it was also like a catechism, sarcastically aimed against the parish priest but also contained a philosophy of the power and intelligence of God and appreciation for and love for me. Sagot sa Espanya sa Ibig ng Pilipinas Answer to Spain and the plea of the Filipinos A poem pleading for change from Spain, but that Spain is already old and weak to grant any aid to the Philippines. This poem is in answer to that Hermenegildus Flores, Ibig sa Pilipinas, a plea from the Philippines. Number 6. Tupluan Dalit Mga Bugtong 
poetical contest in narrative sequence, psalms and videos. A compilation of poems on the oppression by the priest in the Philippines. Number 7. La Soberania en Filipinas Sovereignty in the Philippines This shows the injustices of the friars to the Filipinos. Number 8. Por Telefono Number 9. Pasyong dapat ipag-alab ng puso ng taong babasa. Passion that should arouse the hearts of the readers. The third leader of propaganda movement was Graciano Lopez Haina, a most notable hero and genius of the Philippines. Graciano Lopez Haina was born in December 18, 1856 and died on January 20, 1896. The pride of Haro Iloilo, he won the admiration of the Spaniards and Europeans. He is known writer and orator in the Philippines. He wrote 100 speeches which was published by Mejio Garcia, former bookstore owner of the Philippine Manila Pilatica, and which are still read up to now by the modern Filipinos. At this juncture, let's hear the insights of Dr. Rizal version 2 about the period of enlightenment. Rizal was a very brave person. He used his talent in writing and wrote poems, novels, and published articles that teach Filipinos about good deeds and inspire them to fight for their freedom. He was determined to have his people feed themselves through his words and writings instead of fighting. He was always wise and looking forward as he led his people to independence. Rizal proved that pen is mightier than sword. For his expertise in writings enabled him to convince his whole fellow men to attain justice and defeat Spanish Empire. For words fires whenever and ignites every man's feelings. Just like a saying says that word is powerful. There is comes positive and negative in it. It could heal one's heart but also harm another, just like a double-edged sword. One of these is entitled to the youth, to the Filipino youth. Thank you very much Dr. Rizal version 2 and that's all for today guys. I hope you learned. Bye-bye! Hello guys, I'm back, but not as a host, just me, clean, no more hosting, okay? So today, at this moment, I will ask my sister Kate, who among the propaganda leaders she admire most. Hey guys, this is Kate, my sister. Say hi, Kate. Hi. So what, uh, my question is, who among the propaganda leaders, Rizal, Del Pilar, or Haina, you admire most, and what work of them is your favorite? Um, all of them are noble and did well for our country's liberation. But I, I admire Dr. Zelza the most because of his work, and my favorite work of him was for the youth. This poem was dedicated to the youth, and he wanted the youth to use their capabilities, talent, and skills, not just, for, not just only for them, and for their praise and success but also to our motherland the philippines wow thank you parang ano yun na beauty queen answered <laughs> bye bye